Did you know up to 85 kinds of dinosaurs were on the ark, including two tyrannosaurids, two stegosaurids, two ceratopsids, two brachiosaurids, and two partridges in a pear tree? 85 kinds of dinosaurs? That's more than the number of dinosaur families, and it looks like they're splitting some of the families into separate kinds. How are they justifying that? Oh, gosh. The brachiosaurids aren't all together, and how are camerasaurids going to fit in there? And ceratopsids, how are they going to fit in? Are they going to be able to distinguish between that and protoceratopsids and cetacosaurids? And then the stegosaurids, oh, are we going to be dealing with all of the substegosaurids with their varying number of spikes and, and veins that are found across a hundred million years? Oh, and the tyrannosaurids, are they going to be dealing with all the different celurosaurs? Because all tyrannosaurids are systematically are enlarged celurosaurs. I kind of feel like they're going to be playing some fast and loose with the numbers here. The deer kind, status 19 living genera. We don't know whether this is with the antelope playing as well. The adult lengths again are 2 to 13 feet, which seems quite a range. But they have shown the representative heteroprox. Fossils reveal that the Formosan silka deer of Taiwan has remained relatively unchanged since the early ice age. It apparently sprinted from Mount Arawat after the flood. All living varieties of deer grow antlers except water deer, also known as vampire deer, due to their large, movable, saber-like tusks. Standing 8.2 feet, 2.5 meters at the shoulder, and first discovered at nearby Big Bone Lick, this stag moose was the tallest representative of the deer kind. We put this information in here because it doesn't tell you much of anything, but makes it sound like we do science. Oh, by the way, those fossils they mentioned, those are the ones they insist formed in a week and a half. All right, not a week and a half, but still, fast. They insist these happen fast. Hey, why do I see only two deer? Cloven hooves, yep. And they chew the cud. That's a clean animal. There should be seven of those. The sloth kind. This is very appropriate for the museum because they are pretty slow here. Status 2 living genera. The adult lengths 1.6 to 20 feet. Representative shown, Hapalops. Fossil sloths reveal an enormous amount of diversity within the kind, as it has even included some semi-aquatic and marine varieties, e.g. Thalassochnus. How that could all come about from the created kinds we're not going to investigate because that would involve us knowing genetics and developmental biology. Living sloths rarely exceed 18 pounds, but some ancient ground sloths grew many times larger. Megatherium americanum reached 4.4 tons, roughly the weight of a modern elephant. How that sprinted from Mount Ararat, we also aren't telling, and they must have been just a tiny little baby on board the ship. Extraordinary indeed. Certain algae, ciliates, fungi, and insects take up residence in the coats of modern sloths, and the algae often give sloths a green appearance, which is kind of how I'm feeling at this museum. Bear kind. Status 5 living genera. Adult lengths 3.9 to 9.8 feet. Very precise. Representative shown Agriotherium. The short face bear of the Ice Age could reach a top speed of around 40 miles per hour and stood up to 12 feet high on its hind legs. Of course, our version of the Ice Age isn't the one that actually happened in reality. Our Ice Age was happening super fast at the, after the flood. We offer no evidence for this at all. 
Likely a member of this kind, the extinct diminutive Paractus possessed a skull only 2.8 inches long. None of our creationists did any of this work, remember. We're stealing from the actual scientists. Physical and molecular evidence confirm that giant pandas belong in the bear kind. This also is work we did not do. The pig kind, status eight living genera, adult lengths 1.9 to 9.2 feet, representative shown, platygonus. A gene duplication. Gene duplication? They wrote gene duplication? Oh yeah, look at that, they did. Aren't these the same people that say there's, there's no known mechanism for the adding of new information to the genome? When by definition, gene duplication is adding new information to the genome. Huh. That's odd. Oh, sorry, RJ. Carry on. Unique among mammals is present in both pigs and peccaries, indicating that they likely share a common ancestor and are thus members of the same kind. We did not do any of this work. We normally don't like gene duplications, and we normally don't like to admit common ancestry, even though the pigs and peccaries are actually remarkably divergent. But we're not going to show you much of that information because we don't want to get you thinking about it. Fossils, though, which we didn't dig up, reveal that pigs have changed relatively little in the past 4,200 years, which, of course, is an eye blink, even though pigs and their kin go back many, many millions of years. The long-legged Cubanocaris was an interesting exception. It bore a prominent horn on its head. Oh, we won't be wanting to talk about horns today, now will we, children? Sean, check out the bats. They got dusty butts. Somebody forgot to dust the bats. Yeah, those really are some dusty bat butts. Hey, stand aside. I'm trying to get through here. crap somebody brought a kid to this embarrassment it was such a good day up till now kids don't need to be subjected to this anti-science nonsense what makes me think every time kenny stands in this exact spot he thinks to himself thanks for the money suckers Hmm, how large was the Ark? I don't know. What's the square footage of Imagination Land?
you believe the lines in this place? We're never going to get to the good stuff. So, Sean, what's going to happen next time I say, hey, let's go visit the Ark? That would probably result in me repeatedly punching you in the head, Cy. Wait a minute, is that Marshall, Will, or Holly? Well, thanks for joining us once again, and we'll see you next time in ARC Episode 4. Very good.